she's accused of national security charges in specifically uh, providing or giving state secrets to a foreign organisation or overseas uh, individuals. Now, this is a crime in China that carries usually a sentence of five years to ten years imprisonment, but the way Chinese law is written, uh, it's actually kind of vague uh, as to an idea of how much jail time she could potentially be facing because in mild or minor cases there is no minimum of the sentence that is to be given. Uh, there is a maximum of five years, but in very serious cases it's a life sentence. So we don't actually know what sort of allegation is being levelled at Chung Lei because during the entire 19 month period that she has been detained in Beijing, at no point have China's, uh, Chinese authorities given any details publicly of the case against her. Uh, so best case scenario obviously for her and her family and friends would be for this to be considered a fairly minor offence uh, and whatever sentence she's likely to be given uh, for the time served to be factored in. But we just do not have any details of the alleged offence. Do we know how long the trial will last? Uh, w once again, we don't. Uh, the ABC briefly spoke to her Beijing-based lawyer today, but uh, he wasn't really able to comment on the details of the case. This reflects the sensitivity of it. It is, after all, a national security case, and these in China are treated with the utmost sensitivity. Generally speaking, when we've looked at previous national security trials involving foreigners, they're usually one day, um, maybe even one morning. We don't know how long it will be, but I, I would expect that given that it's uh, scheduled for the Beijing Intermediate People's Court next Thursday, that probably it will be a one day trial. Here's where it gets tricky. There's another Australian facing national security charges in Beijing named Yang Hongjun. Uh, he, he has been detained for the best part of, I think it's almost three years now. He was tried in a closed court last year in May, almost a year ago, and he still doesn't have a verdict, let alone a sentence. So it's one positive step, I suppose, for Chung Lei that finally her case has being brought before a court, even though it's likely to be a closed court, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there will be a quick verdict or a quick sentence. And we do believe it will be a conviction because when it comes to criminal cases in China, the conviction rate is well over 99%. So this will indeed be an uphill battle for Cheng Lei and her lawyers. Well, Yvonne, these aren't courts as we understand them. These are courts that are completely controlled by the Communist Party of China. The judges are not independent. It is quite likely that a political decision has already been made for what sort of uh, sentence Cheng Lei receives. Uh, the verdict is almost certain to be guilty. They would not have held her for more than a year and a half only to you know, have some sort of court process where they don't find her guilty. Um, that, that's not really that important under these circumstances. What's important is what kind of a sentence she is given. And as I said before, because we don't know the details of what she's alleged to have done, it could be a relatively minor offence, and this would be the best case scenario where a sentence is, is handed down that includes the year and a half of time served. But Generally, these sorts of cases uh, where people are accused of providing intelligence or state secrets to foreigners, generally it's a five to ten year sentence under Chinese law. I will just quickly say, uh, in terms of what she's accused of, uh, she worked for Chinese state media, for the state broadcaster CGTN. Um, we, we wonder if this is perhaps a factor in the investigation into her, um, into these uh, alleged crimes, but also too, a good friend of hers named Hayes Fan, who worked for a US media outlet, she was detained several months after Chung Lei. She remains behind bars to this day, also in a national security investigation. Uh, they were friends in Beijing. Are the two cases linked? Once again, Chinese authorities won't say. But this is as far as we can speculate on the actual details of whatever she's alleged to have done. Bill Bertel, thank you. Thanks.